Hey, welcome back to the channel, and today we are going to be talking about Case History. The history of Case Knives. Case is a company that's been running since for 128 years. Very complicated, very um, deep history on this com company. Touches a lot of different companies, and so... Um, uh, today, we're only going to be talking about the early history from um, like the 1886s all the way up to uh, 1915, maybe. So if you'd like to hear more about that, here's some really interesting things from your favorite company. Um, go ahead and check out the video. All right, welcome back to the Fortified Castle, where you shall know the truth, and it shall make you free. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the early history of Case Knives. So, um, officially, that history probably starts off uh, 1896, but in reality, it goes back a little bit further than that. Uh, all the way into the 1886, maybe. Uh, so um, we're going to be talking about that and uh, trying to unravel all of the confusion about the early history of Case. Because Case, when you talk about Case, you end up talking about a lot of different companies because the tentacles of Case reached out into 21 different uh, companies. It is absolutely an amazing story. I hope you stick around for it. And um, we're going to get right to it. Uh, before we do, I want to say hi to all my viewers. And uh, also, don't forget, there's a live show uh, eight, Tuesday, April 9th, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about old... Um, English knives and the legacy of those knives and those knife companies, whether they were the best around the turn of the 20th century, whether they had uh, fallen from their once great prominence. And uh, if you'd like to see that, uh, I hope you um, tune in tomorrow or watch a video later. So um, without further ado, let's talk about the history of this company. So um, the history of Case actually begins, I think, with uh, Job Case, who was the father and grandfather of many of the Case uh, uh, family members. Uh, he was born in 1821 in Cattaraugus County, um, Pennsylvania. And, and the surprising thing is that, that uh, Job Case... Uh, was not involved in cutlery, as far as we know, in any shape or fashion. So Job Case was um, a farmer, and he traded horses, and he was involved in freight, so moving freight. And he was also uh, a lumberer. A bunch of different things that he did. Cutlery was not one of them. So that's one of the first surprising uh, facts to learn from the early case history. And um, he was the father of 10 children, six of whom went on to be involved in the uh, cutlery industry. And that's why you see that reverence for uh, job case. It's a recognition that that's where it all started um, with his uh, children. So, um, Job Case sired uh, Teresa Case, who went on to marry um, J.B.F. Chaplin of Cattaraugus uh, Knife Company fame. Uh, he also had W.R. Case, who um, not only was involved in W.R. Case and Sons, but uh, also um, sired children that went on to become involved in other cutlery companies. He also had uh, Emma Case, who uh, married M.R. Brown, who was the father of the Brown brothers of the K-Bar legacy. Um, he also had Gene, uh, John D., and Andrew Case, 
who were the uh, primarily when you talk about Case Brothers, that's who we're talking about. Those three brothers started the Case Brothers uh, Knife Company. And so um, those six uh, children started it all. So let's start out with um, um, JBF, John Brown Franks, Francis Chaplin. Uh, John Brown Franks, Fra Francis Chaplin married uh, Teresa Case, uh, Job Case's first uh, child. And um, not really sure when they got married, but JBF uh, Chaplin had worked a long time, 16 years, with uh, Friedman and Lugin, who was a uh, very early importer of knives into the United States. And uh, Chaplin was a jobber for him. So Chaplin was the one guy uh, putting together people who wanted knives with uh, Friedman and Lugin, the importers, um, so that they could move their knives to the people that needed to get them. And uh, it worked 16 years in uh, 1882. Um, Chaplin's son, Tent, was old enough to go into business with, with his father. And so he left Friedemann and Lugergen and started his own business, imaginatively called uh, J.B.F. Chaplin and Sons. And that's a mouth mouthful. And um, so they became jobbers themselves. Uh, moving people's knives. In uh, 1886, um, the the um, other four siblings of Job Case, W.R. Case, uh, Gene, uh, J.D. Case, and Andrew Case, uh, joined um, J.B.F. Chaplin. And I convinced him to, to rename the company to Cataragus. So that's when um, Cataragus became Cataragus in uh, 1886. And they only spent a year or so with Cataragus. Um, they were mainly, I believe, in uh, sales. And um, then they left Cataragus. But um, that put the fire underneath those guys to get involved in the cutlery industry. So in uh, 1886, when the uh, Case brothers um, leave Cattaraugus, they end up in uh, Kansas and Nebraska uh, wholesaling cutlery. We don't really know what that means. We don't know whether they were importing knives from the East Coast to that area and then selling them. We don't know whether they had a hardware store. We don't know whether they were a warehouse wholesaling knives to other people. We don't know. Uh, they were involved in cutlery and they, uh, for quite a while out in the uh, Kansas, Nebraska area. That's what we know. W.R. Case, William Russell Case, was not part of that venture. So in um, 1890, um, J.B.F. Trapp, uh, Chaplin um, starts to manufacture knives. He builds a fa factory in Little Valley, uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, uh, sorry I misspoke there. That is um, Little Valley, New York. Okay, so uh, 1890, um, JBF Chaplin starts his uh, manufacturing uh, company in Little Valley, New York, uh, producing knives. In um, 1892, uh, Debbie Case marries uh, Harvey Nixon Platts. So uh, Harvey Nixon Platts is the son of um, uh, Henry Platts, who was was head of, uh, or Charlie Platts, who was the head of um, um, uh, C. Platts. In company, another uh, really good um, knife company. So you can kind of see a pattern here already developing where uh, case daughters are marrying into uh, cutlery um, families, and um, the tentacles of the case families are just going out. 
And you might think, well, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, uh, somebody's wife. But you'll see how all of this history comes together uh, towards the end around 1900. It's actually quite remarkable uh, how that works out. In uh, 1893, C. Platt um, joins Cattaraugus. So uh, that's not an unusual. Platt's um, uh, had worked for a number of different companies, uh, Northfield, Eureka, uh, all kinds of different companies. Uh, so he went to work for um, um, uh, JBF Chaplin at uh, Cattaraugus in 1893. But remember, um, Debbie had married one of his sons. Uh, eventually, all of his sons would be working at uh, Cattaraugus. In 1896, the Case brothers come back from the uh, Midwest and incorporate in Little Valley, and they're jobbing. And so they start uh, jobbing, uh, which is, you know, gathering, uh, producing knives, uh, usually for somebody else, but in this case, they actually started producing their own knives. So some of the earliest uh, case knife markings will be from that period. Case Brother Knives, uh, I think the earliest is Gwanda, New, New York. And so... Um, uh, the Platts brother had set up in uh, Gwanda, and they were jobbing, um, having the Platts brother produce knives for them. That's some of the earliest ones right there. Um, in 1898, uh, Wallace Brown and uh, Emma Case, um, or, or I'm sorry, Wallace Brown, Emma Case's son, starts also in in the uh, same area as the uh, Brown Brothers. So you remember the Brown Brothers, K-Bar? Uh, they started about the same time in the same area. And once again, there is a, um, a uh, case. Uh, Emma Case was, was Job Case's daughter. So she had married, um, uh, what was his name? Henry, I think. Henry uh, uh, Brown or M.R. Brown. M.R. Brown. And um, Wallace and his brother, uh, of course, Emma was their mother. So uh, you see, once again, how that picture is all kind of evolving. Another thing about that is in um, 1890, um, a William Russell case had patented a butterfly razor. Um, he didn't seem to be involved in uh, cutlery at that time. So, you know, that's a pretty strange thing. And, of course, the Brown brothers started off selling razors. So I have to wonder if um, if uh, William Russell Case had not developed that patent for K-Bar. I don't know whether he did or not. But it's just kind of strange uh, that it happened that way. In uh, 1896, uh, C. Platts and Sons uh, start in Gowanda, New York. So that's when Platts leaves Cataraugus, takes his son with them. They go to Gowanda, New York. They start up in uh, Shatt and Morgan's factory. Uh, Shatt and Morgan have, have left Gowanda, and they started up in their factory. All this is going to be important in a, in a few moments here. In... Um, 1898, uh, Platt, C. Platts moves to Eldred, PA, Pennsylvania. And um, also in 1898, the Case Manufacturing Company, um, uh, which was presided over by John D. Case, um, starts out in Kane, Pennsylvania. That's, uh, I think it's a little north of uh, Little, Little Valley. Um, uh, in 1900, um, the Case brothers start their own factory. So, um, they, they came back in 1895, 1896, they're, they're jobbers. And within three years, um, they felt they had enough business. They had done well enough to start their own factory. And so they opened their own factory in 1900. 
In uh, 1901, Standard Knife Company was formed in K, Pennsylvania. That was um, uh, Elliot and Dean Case, who were the sons of Gene Case. Uh, Gene is one of the brothers in the Case Brothers family. Um, in 1903, Crandall Cutlery Company um, moved to Bradford, Pennsylvania. Um, Crandall was married to Teresa Case, the daughter of William Russell Case. Okay, so you have up here you have Teresa Case, who was the daughter of Job Case, and then Russell Case, and below that you have his daughter Teresa marries uh, Crandall Cutlery. You see all this, how it's starting to come together now. In 1904, the Case brothers uh, started using the tested XX um, uh, trademark on their knives. Within a couple years, that would go down to just XX. They, they put them on the um, um, blades of their knives uh, most of the time. Sometimes it was on the back, but usually it was on the blade. And... Um, 1905, let's see, 1904 is also H.R. Uh, Crandall Cutlery Company joined with um, W.R. Case and Sons. So over here you have the Case brothers who built a factory and are competing with their other brother, W.R. Case, uh, who um, starts um, W.R. Case and Sons. Now the person who actually started that is... Uh, W.R. Case's son, uh, John Russell Case. Um, so John Russell Case uses his grandfather's picture, Job Case, and his father's name, W.R. Case, and starts his own company. Of course, his father was helping him in this endeavor. But um, it's a competing company, W.R. Case and Sons. The one that we know today is competing against um, the... Uh, Case Brothers. Um, Crandall, um, who again, you know, Teresa had married uh, uh, Henry Crandall, um, is uh, talked him into moving down to uh, Bradford, uh, PA, and helping her brother out. And so uh, he does that. It's a separate cutlery company. He becomes a member of the board, uh, uh, a principal in W.R. Case and uh, Sons Company. In 1905, W.R. Case and Sons uh, finishes their uh, factory, and C. Platts joins Case. And uh, so remember, C. Platts um, um, was also, also had uh, uh, married uh, one of Pl Pl Henry Platts' uh, sons, uh, Nixon. So you see how it's all coming together now. So um, uh, Crandall and, and Case Cutlery uh, join forces with W.R. Case and Sons. Um, in um, 1908, the uh, Case Brothers property in Kane, Pennsylvania is foreclosed on failure to pay their mortgage. I don't know whether that was something the Case Brothers planned on or whether it just happened. They were doing very well at that point, so I think it's it's something where they were just trying to dump the property, probably. At any case, uh, when that property uh, failed, which it was a... Um, that that property was a um, house that provided offices and a building that provided warehousing for their knives. So they went on to buy um, Smithville Cutlery in Smithville, uh, Pennsylvania. In 1910, the Smithville plant was destroyed by fire. In uh, 1911, uh, Henry Platts, uh, because of his health, had to leave W.R. Case and Sons. He went to uh, out west Colorado and started Western Cutlery Company. Um, 
uh, at that time, Andrew, um, one of the sons of Job Case, that was the original Case Brothers, Andrew withdrew from the cases, uh, Case Brothers and uh, went with uh, K-Bar. Now, remember what we said earlier about Emma marrying um, uh, Wallace Brown? Or, I'm sorry, Wallace Brown being Emma Case's son. And so uh, Andrew earlier had invested in K-Bar, and at this time he pulls out of the Case Brothers and he he uh, actually goes to work for uh, Union Cutlery at the time, which would become K-Bar. So you see how those tentacles are all just everywhere in the Case family and all these other uh, companies. They're all involved together. So it's 1911, uh, let's see, 1912, Case Brothers plant. Uh, burns down in Little Valley. So they lost the plant in Smithfield. They lost the plant in Little Valley. In 1913, they tried to open another plant in Springfield, uh, New York. But they were in deep financial trouble by that point. In 1914, the Case Brothers sell their trademark, um, tested XX, this trademark right here, to W.R. Case and Sons. Then in 1915, the uh, Case brothers are bankrupt. Um, Gene Case, so let's review the Case brothers again. The Case brothers originally were Gene, uh, John D. Case, and Andrew Case. Andrew Case has gone to K-Bar. Gene goes to work for W.R. Case and Sons as a salesperson. I don't know what happens to uh, uh, J.D. Case as far as I know. He just disappears into obscurity at that point. Um, and so uh, at this point, um, you have some uh, other things going on with the children of W.R. Case and, um, and um, Gene Case. Uh, their children are doing things in the cutlery industry, but as far as the Case Brothers, they're out of the picture. All that's left is W.R. Case and Sons. I'm going to drop the um, early history at this point, and when we pick it up in the next video, uh, we'll just be talking about W.R. Case and Sons. It'll be a lot less uh, complicated at that point. So uh, I hope you found that all interesting. Um, a lot of bombshells there. And um, I hope, uh, I appreciate you guys for checking the video out. Uh, I hope you check out my video tomorrow, or my live show tomorrow. I'd love to see you guys there. Thanks again. Bye.